Okay, so part two, we're ready to get back at this. Actually, we had never intended to shoot a part two of this, but uh, it would have been like a 40 minute long video, so yeah, let's, let's go. Intel's Skull Canyon Nook features a 6th generation Core i7 processor and Thunderbolt 3. You can learn more at the link in the video description. We got through all the troubleshooting crap, and it looks like the way that it can work, because you have to understand that HDMI over DisplayPort is not quite the same thing as native HDMI, and that's what the Vive uses. It uses HDMI over DP. So the way to handle that then was to feed my DP signal all the way through the Thunderbolt cable to my Elgato dock, out again through a DisplayPort cable into DisplayPort here, and we were able to do the translation that way. It didn't work when we just tried to use a mini DisplayPort to HDMI cable and go HDMI into the box. But that means the proof of concept is running now. So, Let's assemble it. I'd love for this to be able to fit like right here. So we'll call that kind of good enough for a proof of concept. And then power to this. You see output? Sick. I also need this. The valves box then goes to where the hell does that go? Right, I remember that goes. Okay. Oh, actually, oh, that's kind of tricky. This one needs cables going into both sides of it. I wish I could. Oh, you know what? That would be a pretty freaking cool place to put it. Velcro yeah, because there's already um, there's already a Velcro strap mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So I'll just grab some double-sided. Uh, I don't understand how this bag works. There we go. So that is theoretically the light tether. <laughs> now I've just got to get the bag attached to the headset. So, I've done another round of cable shaving, which I'm hoping is gonna give us enough clearance here to close the top of the bloody headset. So first is HDMI, then USB, although this is a very short USB cable. The three and a half millimeter audio extension, I realized I could just use the original one. It's already light and short. And the last thing we need is power. I could have grabbed an extra power adapter. See, they all use the same, for the cable breakout box and for the headset itself, they all use the same 12 volt power and the same size connector, but even if I did bring one from home, it wouldn't be right angle and I really don't wanna destroy that cable. So I hit a bit of a roadblock. While I was able to strip down the HDMI cable and the USB cable to make the cover fit on the Vive headset, which is more important than I thought because the head strap doesn't go into place without it. I don't have a DC power plug that I can use for it because the only one that comes with the Vive that's a reasonable length and isn't attached to the tether is A straight and B already needed for the breakout box. The good news is I found this a USB to the same size DC plug. Freaking wicked. So all I have to do then is take a 12 volt 1.5 amp power adapter, which I can power in the backpack, and splice it onto that plug. Boop. Oh my God, how am I gonna do this? It's just ripping away one of the wires every time I try and uh, strip the outside. But I'm not gonna be defeated by a wire. Not today, Luke. Do you need to shoot? Crap. 
These are so crappy. Like the sheathing is stronger than the copper wires inside. Okay. Yeah, so flight takes Wait, off at six. What did I just do? Oh, son of a bitch. I just spliced the two freaking ends together. Okay. What's my excuse? <laughs> this may work though. Hold on a second. I could totally claim to have done that on purpose. I just created uh, an adapter for that other battery bank. Now I don't need to use AC power for the Vive headset. Boom. That's what I meant to do. Okay, so we're back in business. And this is great because carrying around this power brick honestly isn't much worse than carrying around all this copper cabling. And now we can power the Vive with this instead. I just have to find a place to put it. Actually, that might work nicely. Oh, 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 don't you love it when things just work? I probably would, but I wouldn't know. Oh, sick. Okay. That's a beautiful thing that I just witnessed right there. So now we can go HDMI in here. Uh, oh, this is one other thing that I grabbed off camera. Just a short USB extension because that USB cable is really short. This is a fun discovery. Even though these ports are all color coded blue, they're USB 2 ports. I had no idea. I was running and looking high and low for USB 3 A to A cables. And then I found the original one included with the Vive. I didn't really want to destroy that one. And I kind of went, what the hell? These are USB 2 cables anyway. So, anyway, I've got a short extension here. It's kind of a ghetto extension. It's got this like stupid extra cable on it. Then power, which, oh crap. I hope that fits. I actually didn't. Um... See, cutting towards yourself is only dangerous if you get impatient and press too hard and slip. Really? Not through yet. Okay, gotta be through now. wires are basically just soldered right to this connector end here. So effectively, by just bending it, I think we can make it 90 degrees. Hey! Okay, now let's see if it fits and if I can put it in without damaging it. It's sort of fragile now. Well, that is a ghetto wiring job if I've ever seen one. The new and improved Linus Tether. Okay. Uh, oh. No, this way. Look like, like it's wrong. It does it, it sits weird, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay. Is it open or something? Oh no, no, it's just like sideways, isn't it? Okay, fine. Ah. Okay, so it's the other shoulder then. Now I'm getting this all tangled up. So this shoulder. Yes, okay, that feels good. Is that the same way I just put it on? This arm through. Okay. Clearly, this backpack is not the one that I would want to use because I can't figure it out. Shoot, how did that come off? I mean, aside from it being a horrible piece of crap. Okay. Let's back 
on. My USB extension is MIA. There it is. Okay. Okay. So I still have to power the headset, which admittedly there isn't a super crazy easy way to do right now. So, let's try it. Oh, okay, my Thunderbolt doodad is not showing up. Okay, let's try the old reboot, see if that fixes it. What I would do if I were actually setting this up for real is I would tie this in a knot, like a tension relief knot so that I don't pull too hard on it. Because one, aside from the weight and uh, size advantage, uh, these Thunderbolt cables are very, very strong. So you could also tie it like around the leg of a chair at the bottom if you have a bit of extra length and tie it here so you don't risk uh, ripping the connectors out at either end. Something I have definitely done with my standard tether at home. Okay, I rebooted the headset, it's on. Okay, uh, what cable is that, is that? Oh, it went off for a second. What cable is this? Can I, do I get a little bit more length for that one or no? Yeah. No freaking way. No freaking way, I think it worked. I mean, no, it worked. Okay, hold on, hold on, I'll get a game open. Oh my goodness, I can't even believe this. Look at that. I mean, that's a better tether, hey? I mean, yes, I'm wearing a backpack now, but I can't even feel that. Okay, let's see if it's actually working. It seems like it though. Oh shoot, right. <laughs> the, this backpack is certainly not ideal. During my benchmarking, I noticed that if I turned to the side quickly, it loosened. Also, it actually has a bunch of other random crap in it right now, so it's much heavier than it needs to be but something like a body pack that has all the appropriate pieces slotted into it so that it's nice and tight against the body actually wouldn't add a lot of weight and now that I've done the proof of concept would work absolutely fantastically. There's still a lot of question marks. How long the battery life would be for the Vive headset as well as for the Thunderbolt dock as well as how many actual customers would exist for a product like this. I mean, we're adding another $200 to the cost with the cable alone. We're adding another $100 for a Thunderbolt EX card for, and it only works on ASUS motherboards. And it's gotta be Thunderbolt 2 because Corning doesn't have Thunderbolt 3 optical cables yet. And there's still some things to work out. You're adding another hundred over dollars for the Thunderbolt dock, plus all of the batteries and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we're looking at a solution that would cost probably as much or more than a Vive in the first place. Though the way that I see it, there's only two kinds of people who shop for a Vive. The kinds of people who just spent all of their money or the kinds of people to whom $600 is nothing. So maybe the potential customer base for this is not as small as you might think. Either way, this was a lot of fun for me. I'm still not sure if I'm gonna convert my personal rig. We'll see about that because there's a lot of refinement that would have to be done to the idea. But it's very cool to see it working in practice and not have to worry about stomping on a super heavy, thick, and uh, oh man, it's awesome. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, what is wrong with you? But if you liked it, hit that like button, get subscribed, maybe even consider checking out where to buy the HTC Vive or any of the other stuff that we've got featured in the video today at the link in the video description over on Amazon. While you're down there, you might want to check out our merch store where we have cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you can join and talk tech with other techies. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering, gee, what should I watch next? And the answer is our latest video over on Channel Superfun. Don't miss any of them. See you guys.